when I was a kid, my parents had boxes of cassette tapes. And what I would do is I'd sift through those tapes and I would find a good one and I'd put it in my Walkman and I'd listen to it over and over again. Uh, this past week, I've been listening to some of those songs that I used to listen to that I haven't heard in over 20 years. And I was surprised by how I could remember uh, most of the words. And I was more surprised by how the emotions and the memories that I used to have at that time frame immediately came back to me when I listened to those songs. Uh, music has a way of transporting us back and reminding us of, of things in our past. Well, the book of Psalms uh, is meant to do something similar for the people of Israel. They were written as songs to be sung, and for them, the book served as hymnals. And when they sang the songs, it was meant to elicit different memories and emotions about what God has done for his people. Now, since they were meant to be used in this way, the authors, when they wrote the Psalms, uh, didn't use specific life circumstances. They wrote with broad meaning so that when a person sang that song, they could place themselves inside of that psalm and make them their own words about their own circumstances and use it uh, for their own memories and prayers. And so that is what we get to do today when we read the psalms ourselves. One of my favorite psalms uh, growing up was Psalm 42. It starts with a deer panting for water. And it says that as the deer pants for water, so my soul thirsts for the living God. As he, you continue to read that psalm, you realize that the person who wrote it is in deep distress. It's, it's not a happy song, but it is a hopeful song. And in verse 2, he says that the, his tears have been his food. And the people around him are saying, where is your God? He feels distant from God, distant from others. And you realize that he's looking at himself and he's distressed about who he is. Isn't that relatable? I think I loved this psalm so much when I was in high school because I often felt these feelings. And uh, instead of responding, um, the psalmist responding in deep anger or frustration with those feelings, he takes them to God and then he sings to his soul. If you look in verse four through five with me, he sings this. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts of song and praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. As you read through the psalm, you realize that he is depressed. He looks around at his circumstances with sorrow. He looks into himself and he finds fault and he seems hopeless. But he sings a song of remembrance and hope. He reflects on what it was like to go uh, to the house of God in worship at the temple. What it was like to celebrate the festivals with all the people around him, the other believers. What it was like to, to celebrate those things in the very presence of God. And with those memories in mind, he turns to his heart and he asks this question, why are you cast down, O my soul? And then he gives a command, hope in God, for I shall again praise him. Now in the Old Testament, God made his presence known in specific ways and in specific places. And so the psalmist is considering uh, what it was like to be close to that physical presence of God at the temple and what it was like to draw close to God with other people. It seems that he misses those days, right? He misses being close to God and being with other Christians. And as every Sunday goes by without Grace Church meeting together, I can totally relate to those feelings. But as the song continues, the author makes clear that God is not distant. He doesn't have to travel to the temple to feel that closeness. And verse 8 says that his steadfast love is with him. God is here. With Jesus, that is even more true. We don't have to go to church to experience a closeness with God and experience his presence. We should long to be together as Christians. We should not give up meeting together but God's love is poured out to us now as individuals. I've spoken to several people uh, who are extremely frustrated with the circumstances that this has brought to them. Some have lost their jobs. Some people actually have asked the question, where is God in all of this? And a lot of times I think Christians can 
sweep those feelings under a rug. They can ignore them and suppress them and act like they don't exist. But it's really awesome that this psalmist does not do that. He fully acknowledges where he's at. He says those feelings to God. But what he does is extremely helpful for us today. He sings to his soul. He sings about a past, he sings about a present, and he sings about a future. A past of remembering what it was like to be with other people, singing praises to God. A present of knowing that God is here. And then he sang to his soul, hope for a future where you get to rejoice in God again. Today, I encourage you to make this your prayer and a command for your own soul. Read it like a, a song that elicits memories of what God has done for you um, in the past. And no matter what your life circumstances uh, right now, I encourage you that you would make these um, commands for your own heart and, and remind your heart of these things. God is here. Hope in God. You will sing his praises again because he is your salvation. He is your God.